Poolside combo about your summer last, last night. night. Ooh, yeah. About your summer last night. I give you no play. Mm. Could I make it shy last night? Could I make it shy on the last, last night? night? Could we make it in? Do we have time? I be the boyfriend in your wet dreams tonight. Nose is on a rail. Little virgin wears the white. You cut your hair, but you used to live a blinded life. Wish I was there, wish we'd grown up on the same advice. And our time was right. I watched some TV in 2022. I watched Severance and it put me to sleep. I watched House of the Dragon and it had me looking forward to Sundays. And I watched Better Call Saul and it changed my life. Don't you love it when shows do that? That's why I'm making this video. I know YouTube's full of these video essays on Better Call Saul, but I don't care. Everyone knows this show is a technical and artistic marvel. Everyone knows that the writing is the best out there. Everyone knows the cinematography is massively underrated, beautiful, and inspired. and the performances are top notch. The toppest of notches. The fact that none of these people have won an Emmy goes to show you how much of a garbage pageant the Emmys are. The fact that this show hasn't won any Emmys at all for anything goes to show you how much of a cesspool extravaganza the Emmys are. They were all like, we gave all the Emmys to Breaking Bad, fuck off. But I'm not here to rag on opulent legacy media jerk off fests. I'm here to tell you I binge watched this show two months ago and it broke my heart. I haven't stopped thinking about it and nothing I watch can really compare to it. And that's including the show it was spun off from, Breaking Bad. And that is an amazing feat because Breaking Bad is one of the TV shows of all time. All right, memes aside, Breaking Bad is one of the greatest TV shows of all time. It's S-tier television. Spin-offs are not supposed to be better than the original show. Especially if the original show is breaking fucking bad. But Better Call Saul is. It's like Vince Gilligan and Peter Gold were all like, all right, we caught lightning in a bottle, but let's do it one more game. And this doesn't denigrate Breaking Bad at all in any way. In fact, Better Call Saul makes Breaking Bad better. It fills in the holes, it answers questions, it gives us surprises. You get a clear image of all of these vicious, efficient criminals running amok, and you can't help but be captured in disturbing awe when you realize that all of these people eventually fall at the hands of a dying high school chemistry teacher. It just builds the legend. When you're done with your little nerdgasms, you start to see that both shows are about more or less the same thing. Ambition, corruption, and redemption. All of the shun words. Better Call Saul is just another show about how everyone's got a little Heisenberg in them. But what sets Better Call Saul apart and above from the source material that it was sired from is that the characters and the relationships are deeper and more relatable. Ask anybody that's seen both shows and they'll tell you Walter White is not the main character of this saga. It's the cucaracha. And now I'm gushing. I'm gushing. I said I wasn't going to. But God, just, just the way that they tell the story is so suspenseful and just overall satisfying. It's, it's, it's so great. And it's so funny. Bob Odenkirk's comedic timing and his history and sketch comedy make Saul Goodman or Jimmy McGill or Gene Takovic, whoever the fuck this guy is. You McFoley, bro? Listen, just go watch the scene where Jimmy goes and talks to the guy with the toilet and tell me that doesn't feel like a Mr. Show sketch. Fill me up, Chandler. Put it in me. 
Chandler's my youngest. Loves it. Huh. Give it to me, Chandler. I want it all. I know I've already praised the show's writing, but honestly, it's it's not enough. The, this show deserves all of the praise in the world. It's produced so many spectacular episodes of television that I will never forget. Wexler vs. Goodman is one of my favorite episodes of TV ever. The scene where Saul plays the brazen attack ad to the Mesa Verde execs had me on the edge of my seat. So I followed the money trail. The evidence was as clear as day. My bank was funding terrorism. Yep. Stop. Chicanery, a newly minted bona fide classic hour of television is everyone's favorite episode. You know an episode is goaded when the memes start appearing. I'm sure you've seen chicanery dozens of times, but I don't know if you've actually experienced it until you've watched it paired up with music from SpongeBob SquarePants. Can you tell the court what that was? A battery. I, and I'm I'm just blubbering here. I don't like I I don't want this to be an overall analysis because like I said, there's so many. The space is saturated with them. But I just I just love the motifs. As a comedian, I love callbacks. Callbacks on callbacks on callbacks. Better Call Saul is full of callbacks and they're all amazing and informative and they all pay off so well. All right, I give up. I'm gonna do a little analysis. Take, for example, the first time we ever see Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad in an episode called Better Call Saul. After being kidnapped by Walt and Jesse and being placed in front of an open grave, he says this. No, it wasn't me, it was Ignacio, he's the one. Oh no, oh no, no, no. Shut up! I just speak English. Lalo didn't send you? No Lalo? In this scene from Breaking Bad, the names to me it was Ignacio, he's the one! And Lalo didn't send you? No Lalo? Are just throwaway names that are of no consequence. Twelve years later, though, in Better Call Saul, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould decide to pull off a gangster narrative move and they introduce us to Ignacio and Lalo, two fucking impeccable characters. Those names don't go to waste. Ignacio Varga is one of the beating hearts of Better Call Saul. He's the ultimate underdog and you can't help but root for him even though you're very aware of how doomed he is. And when it comes to Lalo Salamanca, well, the Better Call Saul Breaking Bad universe has its fair share of boogeymen and Lalo is the king of all of them. Everyone in Better Call Saul is afraid of Lalo Salamanca. Even Gus is afraid of him. This Mexican motherfucker materializes one day in a kitchen making tacos, and what's one of the first things he says? Te vas a morir. The man is basically Satan, okay? ¿Quieres ser amigo del cartel? You want to be a friend of the cartel? Siempre soy amigo! Siempre, siempre soy amigo del cartel! Lalo just causes maximum trauma. And one of the individuals he causes maximum trauma to is good old Jimmy McGill. Anyway, this scene is fleshed out more in the Better Call Saul episode, Breaking Bad. I'm telling you, man, callbacks on callbacks on callbacks on callbacks. Oh, it gives me the chills. So, who's Lolo? Who? Lolo. Got some dude named Lolo sent us. You seem pretty freaked out. Never heard of no Lalo on the street. It's nobody. Hey, are you gonna try that again? Pause. One of the first things I'll point out. Look at this shot. So sick. This is like some horror film shit. It's so close and tight. Jimmy's looking over his shoulder like he's expecting some ghost or demon to grab him. The man is haunted. And what does Jesse ask? Who's Lalo? Who? Me? Nobody. It's nobody. Oh. You gotta understand, 
for a good portion of 2022, I thought we were all going to die. I thought the war in Ukraine was going to escalate. I thought we were going to have World War III on our hands. I thought we were all going to Terminator 2 ourselves. This show, when it finished, had me so fucked up and in my feelings that I forgot all about that. Why do you think Frank Ocean is in this video? This whole dumbass idea for this video was conceived on a drive home from school. I was listening to this song, thinking about the conversation I was going to have with my girlfriend when I got home. I knew we were going to talk about how messed up this show had us and how fucking unfortunate it was that there was no more of it to watch. And yeah, it had a sad, but it was a good kind of sad, a beautiful kind of sadness. The don't be sad it's over, be happy it happened kind of sadness. And more than just taking my mind off existential global political crises, Better Call Saul made me come to terms with the hypothetical apocalypse I thought and still think is looming over all of us. On that same drive home, I thought to myself, if the nukes fly and we all get vaporized, I'm okay with that. Why? Because I got to see Better Call Saul and that shit was dope. Watching this fucking show brought me that much fulfillment and peace and I think that's incredible. I want to do that shit. One day. We're living in the gilded golden age of grifters. We fucking love our frauds. Especially here in America. And that's why we love Saw motherfucking Goodman. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean Jimmy McGill. I can only hope that one day I'll wake up, brush my teeth, eat breakfast, and go about my business. And sooner or later, I'll realize that I didn't even think about the fact that Better Call Saul has ended. Pull your finger guns out and pop one off for the bag, man. It's montage time. I came to visit Cause you see me like a UFO That's like never Self-control And you made me lose My self-control My self-control Keep a place for me For me I'll sleep between y'all It's nothing Keep a place for me it's nothing, it's nothing It's nothing, it's nothing Summertime, give up just a night. 